Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. I'm in a totally different location. <laughs> hey, uh, let's see. I'm, this is where I'm looking just to make sure I got my camera right there. All right, great. Hey, it's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws and welcome. Welcome to our live draw on uh, Wednesday afternoon. Um, if they are first time here, I'm glad that you're here checking us out. Uh, we get together every Wednesday afternoon, usually at 2 p.m. Eastern time. But uh, this week I happen to be in the state of California visiting my parents. And uh, so the time is just a little strange. So today we are coming to you. I'm coming to you at 3 o'clock Pacific time. So just don't get confused. Uh, the Wednesday night, Wednesday afternoon draw is most of the time uh, on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So anyways, if you're here, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> and today we're going to be uh, drawing this nice uh, Highlander of a gentleman. So let's let's jump right into it. I am monitoring the uh, watching the chat. So if you have any questions, by all means, just go ahead and uh, and shout them out, and I will uh, take care of it. Let me just make sure. Okay, good. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Um, let's go over just some basics, okay? So usually when I draw a portrait, I always approach it with a three-step process. Uh, I look for uh, a sometimes gesture. Then I go to construction, and then I go to detail. All right. So those are those are those are the processes I get to. But the key is setting yourself up for success, and what you need to do in order to. Uh... <laughs> my my dad used to be a merchant marine, so in his office he has all these different sea clocks. So if you hear that, that's what that is. <laughs> Anyways. So when you approach the head, you need to get it in the correct alignment. And so that's where I call it uh, two, getting your 2D down. Let me just make sure that's coming through okay. Oh, see, I knew it. All right, that should do it. All right, get your, two, your 2D down getting to your 3D, and then getting to the position of your face. All right, let's 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 go through that together here, okay? So what do I mean by that? So a two dimension is like, if you had a, a center point coming out of the head, is the head leaning to the left, or is it leaning to the right? That's a 2D. So on our paper here, let's just, let's draw three. These are three spheres, okay? And let's position them a little bit different. So the first one, the 2D position, the head is going to be slightly tilted to the right. All right. This one here, and we're going to call this A, B, and C. This one, hey, John, how are you? <laughs> the West Coast is alive and well, my friend. Are you holding down Pennsylvania? <laughs> B, B is leaning a little bit to the right. And we'll make C going a little bit to the left as well, okay? So that's the that's the the way that the heads are leaning in A, B, and C, okay? That's the 2D axis. Once you establish the direction or the, the angle that it is leaning, then you've got to decide whether it's coming forward or the head's going back. That's the 3D axis. We indicate that by, by doing a, a light brow line. And let me show you that. So let's look at A. Let's say A is uh, coming towards us, all right? So that brow line is going to be like that. Let's say in B, this one, the head is going back a little bit, all right? So the head, the brow line is going to be in that direction. And we'll make B also going, leaning back just a little bit too, all right? So that's 2D, that's the 3D. And then we've got to decide where the face is. So you can have you can have the head tilt one way, right? Come forward, and then look, the face, st it's still on the same two-dimensional axis. It's still on the three-dimensional axis, but the face could point any way you want. So 
let's make A, let's say this is going to be the, the way that right here, this is going to be the center line for A. Let's put that in, all right? Let's look at B and, and say our center line of the face is going to be right there. And C, let's let's knock C a little bit way over here. All right. All right, so now that we've established where the face is, now let's start breaking this down into its uh, into its basic form. I do that by using using the letter T on the face. See? The T cross and then down the center. And I want to find where the temples are. And you can take your two fingers right underneath the eyebrows, right here in the corners, okay? So on A, let's say one temple's gonna be there. And because this is a three-quarter view, I'm gonna get a little bit more, a uh, little bit more space on that side. So on a three-quarter view, if I'm looking straight at you, it's perfectly symmetrical. But once I turn to three-quarter view, you see less of this side than you see of this side, you see? All right, let's do that for B as well. So there would be the temple there, and, and this one's going to be over here. All right, then on B, temple's going to be there, and it's going to be up there, all right? Okay, great. So now we have the temple. We have the, the center line. That establishes a T. Let's, the head is typically, if you look at it straight, it's flat on the sides, but round when you see it in its profile view. So let's, let's slice off the sides here. Okay, so we're going to, it's going to be something like this. Over here. Let's do that for B as well. And then let's do that for C. And we know that this is sliced off. We'll, we'll do the center line right down the center here. All right. All right, let's get this. But the jawline drop down from this the ear. Well, let me just show you where the ear go. Usually, the ear will fall into this quadrant, right, right, right here. All right, so we could just quickly put an indication of where that ear is going to fall. And then from the corner of the ear, it's going to drop down to this corner of the jaw. So let's drop down just a little bit here. Drop down in each one of those examples. And then we're going to, from the letter, let's start at A, okay? The, and we're going to establish where the bottom, bottom of the chin is. So let's just say the way that we do this, get a nice proportion here, is typically the hairline, watch this now, the hairline to the... The hairline, look at mine, it's going way back. The hairline down to the brow line is a third, all right? Then it goes to a third to the nose, and then a third to the uh, bottom of the chin. So we can just kind of rust guesstimate that, all right? So the chin is going to be about there. Let's do that over here. So this is going to come down here, okay? There's the third up there. A third and a third. Come over here to C. All right. Third, the brow, the hairline's gonna be up there. Third. That might be a little much, but we'll go with like that. <clears throat> All right. Let's get the jawline in. Let's move over to A. Back to A again. So we're gonna jawline comes down in the corner there right right in the corner and then we just do a sweep we sweep it around and B look at that. we're gonna sweep it around and the same thing in C sweep that sweep that jaw around <clears throat> 
So when you do have a three quarter view, the, the side that is furthest from you, so if I turn my head like this and look, if I, if I turn my head like this, this side over here is relatively a straight line. It's relatively flat. So you could come in here like that. Let's do that to B over here as well. And let's do that to C. Then you have to complete and bring the jaw around. And if I go too fast, just ask me to slow down. I'm, I'm watching the comments and I'll do that for you. All right, the last thing I want to show you on this is uh, what they call the visor. This is the area where the, uh, from the brow line, it kind of goes in. And if you, you could feel with your fingers, you could feel right here uh, where your eye sockets are, it goes in and then it comes out, usually down to the base of the nose. All right, let me show you what that looks like. So we're going to come in like this a little bit, starting in A. Making sure my screen is being broadcast here. Okay. All right, so we, we're coming in here uh, on A and then this is gonna be slightly down just like this. I'm going to curve this around here. All right, that's the, that right there is the visor. Let's do it on the other side over here. This is going to come down just a bit. All right, let's do C now. It's going to come in just a bit. So, you know, when I when I started to draw heads, this was something I drew over and over again to try and get and understand the basic foundation. To building a head. So once you have these parts, once you have these parts, then you can then uh, you can then start to add the features on top of it. All right. So let's we'll stop there today. That gives you that gives you the basis, and uh, let's go ahead and jump into our portrait. All right. So let me remove this. Bring up our ah. Uh, our Highlander gentleman, okay. So let's let's take a minute here and get familiar with this with this head. So one way that uh, if if you were tuned in at the very beginning, I talked about gesture, construction, and detail. So we use gesture a lot to familiarize ourselves with what we're drawing. So let's take a minute here. I'm going to give you exactly uh, three minutes. And what I want you to do is to draw this as fast as you can. You have three minutes. So here we go. You ready? Three minutes. I'll time you. And I'm going to draw two, but just go as quick as you can for three minutes. All right, go. You got three minutes. So just pretend like your uh, pencil is just ice skating across your page. All right, let's see how we do here. We've got uh, three minutes. All right. And you could quickly do what we just did.
Remember, you're not really doing accuracy per se. What you're looking for is get the idea down. This is our gesture. One minute down. And if go faster if you have to. So I don't I don't care about it look what it looks like. Just go as fast as you can. Got one minute left. Thirty seconds. Okay, time is up. Good job. All right, excellent. So that gave you a quick, it kind of took you out of relit. It loosened you up. It kind of got you in the right place. So let's let's remove our let's turn the page on those drawings, and now let's go at it from a construction standpoint. All right, we're gonna go step by step now. So let's start off with a sphere. Let's start off with a sphere. All right, let's get there. Let's get to 2D angle. Now his, his face is slightly angled going this way. All right, so that's the 2D. 3D, he's not really leaning forward nor going away. His head is pretty straight up there. So we're, we could leave it at that. And let's go ahead and get this brow line in. And this brow line is going to kind of come around like this. Then, uh, you know what? I'm going to actually change mine slightly. I'm going to I'm going to do it like this. And it is a three quarter view. So his face placement then is going to be off center just a just a little bit. Now, if, if you don't go through this process, what will happen most of the time is you'll draw your faces looking straight at you. It's the way that your brain will, like, uh, um, organize something that's complex, okay? So you really have to set up these parameters at the beginning to make sure that you are um, getting things all lined up, right? So there's that's the face placement. Now, let's let's get the side of his face over here. So I'm just kind of looking at a picture and side of his face is going to be flat over here as well all right let's get his temples in place so his temple one temple is going to be there and the other one's going to be way over here i think And that's the T, the center part of his center part of his face is right there. <clears throat> All right.
right, let's slice off the side there. So we gonna have the flat side of his head, right? And we can drop our line. Okay. This ear is going to come down here. We'll we'll go into a little more detail on that in just a bit. All right. Let's drop down there just just a little bit there. Okay. Let's let's now establish the uh, bottom part of his nose, which will be about a third. So I'm going to. I'm going to estimate mine to be right about there. And then I'm going to copy that distance, get the bottom part of his chin right about there. <clears throat> okay, let's bring his, let's bring that jaw around there and course the jaw around this other side there construction gives way to lightness let's get that visor and you could clearly see it on him here so it's going to come down like this it's going to come down like that this one's almost straight on. Okay, now that's the basis. That's our foundation. So let's build upon that. So let's go ahead and start with this nose. And I always like to start with the gabella at top there. So up here, very carefully, I'm going to draw a little, a little keystone shape. That's that's like this right here. A little keystone shape. And this is going to be the uh, the perimeter, okay, the containment line of his nose. So I'm going to come around like this. And we're like we're like a sculptor here. <clears throat> All right, let's let's keep going here. Let's come in here and usually with a with head you have the ball the ball of the face. The ball of the face goes right right behind the nose here, and then comes all the way around here. Okay, and then the chin is on top of the bottom part. So usually this is the way it will go. It will go something like this. All right, so there's there's the ball, the ball of the mouth, and then the chin will will sit on top of that. You know, I used to remember drawing like this, doing going over this over and over again. And uh, finally, after some time, these things got in my head where I didn't have to think about them anymore. I just kind of looked for them. And that's really where eventually you'll get at. So you won't draw all these things all the time, but you will use them in the basis of how you draw the head, you see. Okay, let's get the eyes in here. So... 
I'm looking at his right eye here, and I'm just going to... He looks pretty stern here, so we're just going to do this sort of thing like that. And then the same thing over here. It's pretty, pretty straight eyes like that. Oh, I forgot to type hi, John. There you go. <laughs> All right. Nice curve for these eyes underneath here. Something like that, maybe. And the same thing over here. All right, let's get these uh, pupils in here. And I'm, I'm looking for that negative space, the whites of his eye. Yeah, might, that might be a little too big, but that's okay. Okay, let's let's get the nose in, and, and I'm just going to add a little bit of tone underneath here. This is going to help, that's going to help tell me that, that that nose is turning the corner. And then I could add a little nostril here, or the wing of his nose, and, and I could see it slightly on the other side. Let's get the, his nose looks like it may have been broken at one point, which seems to be very appropriate for a Highlander. Get a couple bar fights or whatever, right? So I'm going to bring his nose in just a little bit, just like tweak it just a little bit. Okay, let's move down to his mouth area here. All right, mouth area. Get the corners of his mouth first. And we're just going to draw a bit of a a bit of a frown there, huh? And you can see, like, a lot of times, there was a book I read as a kid called Drawing the Marvel Comics Way. And they recommend that you draw men's lips like this. You just kind of indicate the upper lip. And then you don't even draw the lower lip, but you put in the, uh, the shadow underneath them. So let's do that here. That's a good, good method here. All right, so let's just kind of come in. There's a slight... V here. And then let's add a little tone right underneath his uh, bottom lip. All right, let's get this uh, mustache, and let's think of let's think of volume and mass when we draw it. So, start. You could start with a containment line. That's like the overall shape of it. So let's look at it closely here, and it's gonna come down there maybe like this. And then it's going to go through the center line there. And it's casting a bit of a shadow 
This is going to give us a little bit of thickness on it. On the rest of his beard there. All right, you see the the li the lines the uh, um, around the ball of the mouth, right below the nose here. So let's get those in. These are gonna come up here. They usually are very. The older you get, the more prof you know you can actually see them a lot more. And let's bring his beard down now. I'm going to start all the way, all the way at his ear there, on the far right side. I'm just going to almost follow the jaw around. I'm thinking of this is being built up like clay. And then then let's come in and add some surface lines to this. This is really going to toss at this. This is <laughs> Like I said, I'm in my parents' house right now and I uh have not spent <laughs> this kind of time in my dad's office, my dad's study. So that, that always makes me laugh. All right, look, there's some nice surface lines to indicate that beard. Okay, let's get to the, the far side of his face. And this is almost like a, a straight line coming in, right? And let's work on this ear now. And then we can get onto his hat, okay? All right, the ear. Let's think of the parts of an ear. Usually you have the letter C. You have the letter Y. You have the letter Y uh, and then another letter C. So let's get those in. So here's the outside part of the ear is the first C, okay? The inside part of that is another letter C. They're, they're backwards usually. Then you have the letter Y and you can't really see it in his ear, but it, it usually is like this. I'll zoom in. You see that? See the letter Y right there? And then you have another little C right there. Oh, yep. Coming together nicely. So he's he has his brow. His brow is furled. So you wanna you wanna think of the that mass. That mass is that right that sits the eyebrows on top of it. That mass right there. Okay. So let's bring in a little bit of a furrow there and something like that. And then let's get this eyebrow in. And the other one is like this. All right, let's get these uh, the wrinkles underneath his eyes. So we're going to come in like this. 
Same thing on this side. And his eyes are deep set into his head. So let's add a little bit of a tone just across the whole eye, especially right in there. And we're going to do the other side as well. We're going to just add a tone across the whole entire thing there. Might have been too dark, but that's all right. All right, let's get on to his beanie now. Whenever you draw a hat, any kind of hat, I always say draw the band that goes around the head first. So uh, let's see, we're going to come up here and this is going to have a nice round round feel like that then we're going to come up here just with this almost like do this lightly this is the you know, it's not really there in that you can sort of see it in the hat there, but that's that's kind of the band that's going around. And when we draw this hat, let's let's use straight lines. Let's try and not get curves right off the bat. So let's just just very lightly. Kind of walk just slowly across the hat the head looking at the negative shape And then let's do the same thing. Let's walk down his, his neck as well. So there's, there's the uh, neck there. And so this, then he has some cloth, like a uh, turtleneck almost. And I'm just going lightly here. Just keeping it nice and with straight lines. All right, let's get the left shoulder in. And I want to show you this here. Look at this negative shape there. Look at that. That's a great, great measuring. That's a great measuring device that you can make sure you get the right angle of that shoulder. So let's see here. It's going to be like this. Okay. And the other shoulder is up there. John says, it's interesting when you go for a dark expression when the tone is light, like the eyebrow. Is that for teaching reasons, or how do you prefer to render that? It's interesting when you go for a dark expression when the tone is light. Um, like the eyebrow. John, I'm not sure what you're asking. <clears throat> Um, I'm not sure what you're asking, my friend. <laughs> he has light hair. Okay. Oh, I see. Yes, yes, that's true. Okay, yes. Um, he has light hair. Is that in his uh, eyebrows? Yeah, it's a little bit on the gray side. Um, no, I, I I just put it in dark with no... You're, you're correct. He does have light eyebrows, and I've gone into darker on them. I just did it. <laughs> I don't have a reason. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I think it's. Uh, why did I do it like that? Um, 
I don't know. <laughs> Is that okay? I don't I don't want to just throw you a bunch of wackadoo. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably maybe should have gone a little bit lighter on them. So anyways, all right, let's continue on here. <laughs> That's a good question. Good question. Okay, here we go. Let's get into this hat here. So let's start off with the obvious, this, this overlap right here. We're going to just go with a straight line here. <laughs> a little bit, look at that letter T right there. You see how I did that at the top there? And then this is going to come in here. And now I'm going to just kind of start thinking of, of overlap on this. And where are the wrinkles? So we've got another wrinkle kind of coming here. And this goes up to the top of his head. I, I got another, like there's like, I see a lot of uh, triangles in this hat. All right. Now I'm just going to go in here and drop a tone. Drop a tone. And I'm even going to drop a tone into the... Uh, I'm going to drop a tone into the uh, turtleneck that he's wearing. And drop a tone right into the uh this might be might be wool or something huh all right let's go ahead and draw this sash sash starts on the top right of his head on his right side here and don't draw the knot first just just kind of rush get the outer edges of the sash Just like that. So much of this is just, it's more expressive. There you go. To answer your question, it's more expressive. <laughs> to exaggerate the expression, right? <laughs> All right, look, there's this knot here. Let's go ahead and get the shape of that knot. John, I'm always going to use you for my, uh, give me the right answer, right, buddy? All right, there's, there's the shape of that knot. Now, if, if you lived in the United States and you grew up with a comic strip, Calvin and Hobbes, uh, a lot of times the artists, and if you're, not, <laughs> if you're not familiar with the character Calvin and Hobbes, you might want to look them up. They are fantastic to copy and try and draw from you learn a lot about especially about action and comic strips but uh one thing that he did whenever he drew patterns which i always liked he would just do this and i'm gonna it's better if i just show you first he didn't he didn't follow the picture when he was adding a plaid to something he just simply did something like this and i i've always liked it and I just do it all the time. It doesn't, it just is kind of an interesting way of doing a plaid. So you do it almost, you're looking at it straight on. And this is, you know, that there's sometimes there's this old adage about artists steal. <laughs> steal ideas from one another well definitely this is this is not mine and i've always liked it so whenever i see something that has a plaid in it i just do something like that and i leave it i leave it for my uh, viewer to uh like oh okay they get it and strange thing is they don't even correct question what i'm doing Good artist. Yeah, borrow. Great artist. Steal. <laughs> there it is. There it is. 
Hannah said it. Yeah, we steal. So a pattern, a plaid pattern. Look, this shirt I'm wearing has a plaid pattern. Okay. Yeah, I definitely stole that. I'll, I'll admit it. I maybe someday some of you will steal it, steal things from me. I hope you do. All right, there's a there is the opening of his shirt there, and then it looks like he has a button right here. All right, let's go ahead and just I'm last thing we're we're kind of done here, but I'm just gonna. Go around now and, and sharpen up these edges of his hat. Now that I've got these lines in place. I'm going to come in here with a little more darker tone. This will pop the face off a little bit. Let's see. Hair's coming down here. This side of his face is a little bit darker. And I think we're, that's it for today. So, uh, boy, I, I don't know about you, but I am a little proud of myself that I was able to do this in a different location. And, and, <laughs> and it came off kind of successful. So, and I'm glad that you all checked this out. I do hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching, and I always, I always appreciate. Oh yeah, love the draw. It reminds me of Star Wars Rebels. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's a great show. Yeah, it is. They, they, you know those those characters from Star Wars Rebels are actually are, are uh, they they make a great subject matter because they are so broken down into uh, very um, uh, uh, facets and. Uh, and straight edges. So uh, I, I've always enjoyed the animation there. All right, that's it. See y'all later. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great evening, and I will talk to you later. All right, my name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws. John Hanny, thanks for all your comments. All right, see ya. Bye.